Hey guys, uh, welcome back. Now, as a lot of you know, I've been quite a fan of the Sonic Black. Yeah, I know, here we go, another black video. We're, um, we've been out using it quite regular. We've had some good fish on it. I've had fish, 18.2 is my biggest. I had a, short, I had a conger, 18.2 on it. I've had raised to 10.8 on it. I've had spurs to seven, cod to six on it. So it's been quite, quite a good rod. Now I've had it 13 to 14 months. So I feel that I owe it an updated review. It's about the best way I can put that. It's, it's still going strong, as I've said. There's been a couple of little modifications that I've done to it. Um, I've put some vet wrap on the handle. Um, self adhesive is an adhesive bandage. You get it from the pound shop. It comes in like 10 metre rolls, I think it is. Um, purely, because I fish with the reel down, it's purely for when I'm casting. I can get hold of it. You can see there. I can get hold of it. It's comfy. When, when it's wet, it's warm. When it's wet-ish. And it just just helps when I'm casting. Um, the other main, there's a couple of other little things I've done, but the main altercation that I've done to it is I've built a reducer. Because I fished with the reel down, that's that's where the original butt ended. That butt cap was, was on there. It's just comfier when you're reeling in. You can, you can put that in your groin and you can lean into a fish. They're the two main uh, alter, alterations even that I've done to it. I've also whipped a tip light holder onto the end, which to be fair, it will be coming off because I've had the line wrapped around it a couple of times um, and I'm not a huge fan of these ones. Now, going on, the, you know, the, the, there's pros and cons to everything. Pros, Usability. I've used this rod on some of the roughest ground the country has. I wouldn't say it's ideal, but it's it's coped. Um, but in the next breath, I've also used it for flatty bashing on a small estuary because it was it was the rod that I grabbed, tried it, and it worked. Bite detection is great, especially when you're using braid. Uh, this is run for a multiplier, but I, I've I've used a fixed sport. I do use a fixed sport on it regular. Um, incidentally, my Shimano Ultegra 5,500 balances out perfect on it. Um, cons, well, my main bugbear with this rod is the eyes. The shit. There's no other way of putting it, they're absolutely shy. I think the, the, the al alkali eyes, I think, and somebody might comment and correct me on that one. I think they're called alkalis and they're cheap and tacky and shit. I've dropped this rod four times. It's four times it's dropped, um, which in itself would break the eyes. But I do know a lot of other people have had issues with the ceramics popping out of the middle. Now, I've replaced two of the eyes. I replaced that one. I don't know if you can quite see that or not. Um, did it myself. Quick, cheap, does the job unreasonably strong and I've replaced that tip eye. Now that that eye, the tip eye, is off for a Sonic Black. I managed to get one off for a donor rod down at the tackle shop. That eye is one that I had lying around in the shed. Um, but does what it does. Uh, there's, there's not much else to say. I do think the the walls on the, uh, the blank are quite thin, which I think does have a bearing on some of them snapping. But I do think it is when people wrap the line round tip lights and stuff like that, or when they wrap round the cast and they just, they just crack. I've just noticed a, a bit of a mark on that there where I wrapped the line round it last night. I don't know if you can see that, just there. I've just noticed that. Well, be fine, not hurt it. Um, <laughs> it says, 
it's no longer my go-to rod. I'll get to that in a minute, but I, I bought a Sentry. Um, but I still do use it. Now, as I said about it not going to be my go-to rod, I bought a Sentry Compressor S. Um, purely because it's got the pedigree and the backbone to cope with the bigger fish. And now when I say bigger fish, this leads me on to my next thing, which is my targets this year. I've got two targets, two main targets that I want to achieve. The first one's I want a common skate from the shore. Now, some of you will have seen the other video where I hooked into one of my conti rod. That was a total accident. Absolute, total and utter accident. I chucked the bait out, the bait was that big, three inches, maybe four. Squid and bluey, 100 yards, and it, it took it. it. It wasn't intended because that rod is simply not designed for that sort of fish. You know, that fish was potentially over a hundred pound and I'm amazed the rod didn't give. Um, <coughs> so, I know it can be done. That is one of my targets. The other target is I want a, I want a 30 plus conga from the shore. Now, like I say, my biggest last year was 18.2, which is, it's not a bad fish. You know, it's, it's not gonna smash any records, but it is a PB. Um, Places, there's, there's the places where you get 30 plus conga or conga of any real size on, in the north of England are quite the few and far between. So we're going to be travelling to Devon in, Ju in June. Um, we're going down to Devon, we're going to fish Bricks and Breakwater and Berry Head. Um, I grew up in Devon, so I know some of the marks reasonably well. I grew up in Devon in the 80s and I do remember conga coming off, in fact I remember a few congas but one sticks out in my mind, it was it was either 44 or 47, I can't quite remember, but it was it was in the 40s, um, off Bricks and Breakwater, and I do know that there's been some big ones come off Berry Head. So there be two main targets, I will be doing the species hunt as well, well I'm already doing one, um, so I'll, be, I'll, still, I'll still be targeting the species, but because I'm targeting some seriously big fish this year, this rod's not gonna be getting used as much. I'm still very happy with the rod. I still think it's a very capable rod for the money. And I still am adamant that a lot of the breakages are down to misuse or use error. I'm gonna throw it out there, same as I did in the first video. It's just, the amount of abuse this rod's had, and it's still going strong, I can't see as it being any other any other thing than user and misuse. I can't. But I'm gonna be out on Friday with Earl, Earl McShane on Gone Fishing, so keep an eye out for that video. And if you don't, if you're not already subscribed to him, go onto my homepage and there's a link to his channel there, it's Gone Fishing with Earl. Um, he's absolutely itching for a conger, desperate for a conger, and the amount of conger I caught last year, I, I think that I'm, I'm more than qualified to help him catch one, and I'm, I'm hoping he thinks the same as well. Um, so we should get one, although it might not be Friday, because we're gonna be fishing Whitehaven Pier Friday, and I, I've got a sneaky feeling that it's still a little bit too early in the season yet for him to be feeding heavily. That said, I, I do think that there's, there's um, I do think there's some resident conga there, so we'll see. So there's that video is going to be coming. Uh, me and Chris were also going away in um, July. Again, we're not sure whether we're going to go to Wales or we're going to go to Scotland yet. We're, we won't know till the week before. Other than that, nothing else to tell you. Starting to drivel on a bit now. Make sure you hit the like button. You know, if you're not already subscribed, please feel free to subscribe. Feel free to comment. I'm always open to comment. And feel free to let me know what other videos you'd like me to do. Because I'm sure there's videos that there's things that people want to know that I've not done a video on. So just comment down below and uh, I'll try and get something sorted for you. Thank you very much for watching, as I said, we'll, um, 
we'll hopefully we'll hopefully get a Congo on Friday May now. Hopefully Earl will get one, and then uh, we can tick it off his list. Thanks very much, guys. I'll see you all later.